everybody, it's the Van Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we have a really special guest, Carol Boston Weatherford. Say hello, Carol. Hi, Van. How's it going? It's going great. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are you happy to be here? I'm happy to meet you. Oh. Well, I want to introduce you to one of our, my new friends. This is Fernie. Say hi, Fernie. Meow, meow. Hi, Fernie. Meow, meow. <laughs> now, I love that you and Fernie are wearing matching outfits today. We right? are. We're very botanical. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fernie. Fernie likes that a lot. Yeah, he, not, it's not often that Fernie meets somebody with such exquisite taste. I know. I think we may be able to get along really well. <laughs> well, now, this is my show, so don't upstage me, Fernie. <laughs> Now, now, Carol, we, didn't, we came to talk about you. So first of all, tell us where you're from. I am from North Carolina. North Carolina? But I currently live in Maryland. Oh. Well, I mean, I guess you're keeping it on the coast. I am. I am. Carol, you're an author, and, 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 and specifically a, a, a poet. Is that correct? That's correct. I write poetry. Now, tell us a little bit. When did you get started writing poetry? Or when did you notice that this is something that you'd like to do? I think your young listeners are going to like this story because I started writing poetry when I was in first grade. I made up a poem about the Four Seasons, said it for my mom as she drove me home from school, and she was so surprised that she parked the car, asked me to recite it again, and when I said it the second time, she wrote it down. Oh, wow. And so that's the only reason I, I even know, what the, know the poem today. And my dad was a high school printing teacher, and he printed some of my early poems on the printing press in his classroom. And that was before there were computers in schools, homes, or offices. So I, and I got to see my work in print when I was just like eight years old. That's really cool. Before I even dreamed of becoming an author. It wasn't until I was in my 20s that I decided I wanted to be an author. Oh. Um, I had a poem published in a local magazine. And when I saw that work in print, I decided that I wanted to make poetry my life's work. Uh, but, but I imagine from eight to mid-20s, you were constantly writing, or, or like I was. Yeah. You're right. I was. I wrote a lot of poems. Some of them very bad. Well, yeah. That, I mean, that's how I've it gotten, goes. I've gotten better with the years. Right. Writing is, is like exercising your muscles. You know, like you don't it start is. off being able to like deadlift 400 pounds. Right. It's like it. it's like anything else. You got to practice. Yeah. And you get the more you practice, the better you get. Right? What was it that drew you specifically to poetry over prose? I think it was hearing poetry as a child, um, you know, reading poetry as a child, um, you know, the, po the poems of Robert Louis Stevenson, um, the poetry of Langston Hughes. Poetry makes music with words, and I just love the way language sounds when it's, you know, when it's making music that way. Ah. So I, I write it because I like the sound of it, I, and I like to read poetry, so I, I write what I like to read. Now, now, that leads me to the next thing I want to talk about which is you've written nonfiction poetry books. Yes, I have. Now, yes, I have. I, I, find, I think that's so interesting. I, it's not something I've seen a lot of. So how did you discover this beautiful way to present history to children? Poetry came natural, comes natural for me. Ever since, you know, writing that first poem as a, as a child, um, poetry has been my first literary language. So it's more natural for me to go to poetry than it is for me to go to prose, even though I've been a journalist and have written, written prose quite a bit. Uh, but I, as a, again, I love the way poetry sounds, so it's more enjoyable for me to write. And I think it, I can make nonfiction accessible to more readers by presenting it as poetry, oh. um, because there's white space on the page, and reluctant readers are not as intimidated by poetry as they might be by the denseness of prose on the page. Ah. And so what I do um, with these historical fiction and, and, and nonfiction books that I write in poetry is to create the emotional landscape of, of the time and of the place or um, around the person that I'm writing about. Now, your son is also an artist in his own right. Yes, he is. He um, was first a, um, a visual artist. He um, has an MFA in uh, painting from uh, Howard University, but he's also a poet, a spoken word poet. So he, he has done you know, spoken word events, and we have collaborated um, on at least one manuscript that will be a book, I think maybe in 2024, it's called Wrap It Up, and it's about how to rap. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Well, now let, let's talk about the books that you brought today. Okay, I've got You Are My Pride, A Love Letter from Your Motherland, which is a creation story. Um, that's written in the voice of Africa, and it is about a question that 
humans the world over have pondered since our beginnings, and that is, how did, how did we get here? Where did we begin? Whoa. And according to science and fossil, fossil remains, we began in Africa. And oh, so yeah. this is, um, You Are My Pride is about our common origins in Africa, which is the cradle of, 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 man, of humankind. The other book that I brought is Sugar Pie Lullaby. And it is a, a tribute to Motown that strings together Motown song titles into a lullaby for children. And I, the one reason, one reason I love it, besides the fact that I grew up on the Motown sound, is that the illustrator Sawyer Cloud depicts so many different kinds of families in the book. So we see families with, you know, a mother and a father. We might see a family with a single parent. We might see families with two mommies or two daddies. But they all ha have love for their children. And they surround their children with love, particularly at bedtime. Carol, thank you so much for coming on this show. This has been so fun. Yes, it has. Goodbye. Goodbye.